Okay. She knows the news yet? No. No, I didn't tell her anything. Stop. <sighs> we came from Japan uh, in 2001. At that time, Kuri was six years old and she was very fine. Hi, and she really liked uh, dancing and uh, singing and she really liked swimming. When she was eight years old, she had a grandma seizures. And after that, her cognitive uh, skills is decline and decline and decline. And uh, my husband changed it. Yeah, and 15 years, 15 years ago, they uh, they were diagnosed DRPLA. Walking, talking, eat, eating, everything getting worse and worse. And at that time she was 13 years old, but uh, we, we are said maybe she could survive until 20 years old. Now 29 years old. And my husband and I decided we really didn't want to help her, but uh, no medicine, no cure. Now, did it change it? And now, uh, so we know, uh, so it's, it's me in the clinical trial. And uh, unfortunately, my husband, seven years ago, passed away. But he really wanted to save Kuri. Uh, so how was your trip to Japan? It was good? Yeah, this okay. Oh my goodness. Oh, you're so kind. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So I did hear back from Anne Lorem. Yeah, I did hear back from Anne Lorem. And um, yeah, they approve a treatment. Oh, really? Yes. So it's, it's mean about the, how about the FDA, not yet? Not yet, yeah. But we have a lot of, we still have a lot of work to go. So we still have to submit uh, the IRB approval. Uh, we still have uh, a few things to work out. Um, obviously at any time it, you feel like if you don't want to, to continue, it's okay to back out of it, you know. Because honestly, I'm scared and I'm nervous. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, but I'm happy, and okay. I think uh, I think she's happy. You think she's happy? Yeah. Okay. Okay. DRPLA stands for Dental Rubral Pallidoluysian Atrophy. It's a rare genetic disorder affecting the brain. It affects mostly Japanese population, about two to seven per million uh, people. It can start anytime, you know, whether it's a child or adult. Um, and the severity really varies. The earlier that it starts, the more severe uh, it can turn out into. It affects the function of the brain cells, you know, especially the brain cells that controls movement, eventually leading to um, dementia. So the first ASO clinical trial took place this year in February of 2024 uh, in, in a center in New York. Uh, so Kuri is the second patient in the world that has been approved to receive the ASO therapy. So it involves making a uh, synthetic strand of DNA that binds to complementary dance of DNA in uh, Kuri, so we have to send Kuri's DNA. The synthetic strand of DNA will bind to Kuri's DNA to stop the production of this bad protein, you know, that's been affecting her brain and affecting her movements and giving her seizures. It, this is a, still a clinical trial, uh, but we are uh, grateful uh, for the opportunity. You know, uh, we certainly do not know if it will work or how much it will help Kuri, you know, uh, but certainly it is an opportunity for a chance for Kuri. And we're also very fortunate that uh, there's doctors and the research team here at Hawaii Pacific Neuroscience at the Center for Rare Neurological Disease are willing to volunteer the time uh, to render the research procedures and care. The proof of concept, if it works for this rare disease, it will 
potentially be applied to other uh, genetic diseases as well. So I think uh, we should not underestimate the implications of uh, the significance of such a therapy. I thought the chances of getting um, a clinical trial for Puris was very slim, you know, because we're in Hawaii and, but, but I also knew I didn't want to say no to her because uh, the least that I could do is uh, say yes to her and try my best.